Hey animators, I'm doing a lot of testing of my new pass animation tool at the moment uh, with different rigs and that and uh, I'm kind of exploring workflows for cleaning up things like foot slip and adding uh, additional animation on top of the existing cycle so I thought I'd do a quick demo while I'm doing that on this little test just to kind of um, illustrate how it's working and um, so yeah I've got the uh, slalom uh, velociraptor here He's running along this path. If you actually look at his controllers, I've, I've done some of the setup for this already. Uh, I'll explain uh, more about this in uh, another video. But originally he was animated with his main mover, moving him along, and I've just I've muted the channel on that. And then the actual animation cycle that he's using is just a 17 frame run cycle. Like all his controllers are keyed on frame one and frame 17. Um, so they've just got one loop and then I've baked that into the uh, into the path system and then I can actually basically hide the controllers and I've got these locators that the path system has, has created and the uh, red ones are basically the pivot points that are attached to the curve itself and you can animate those and offset those if you like to kind of you know add variation or to you know maybe have them lean going around corners and stuff like that and there's, there's also then those ones are they have the path as their pivot. There's also these other controllers then that have the, con the original control as a pivot. So for example, this one, if I look at this, this was the original head control pivot. So this one is quite nice for animating the actual controller. Say I want to have him, you know, rather than just like he will follow the path as he goes along. If I actually just grab the path control, this is actually what's animating him along the path. There's just one curve here just a linear curve just, just going off to infinity but if I animate this you'll notice as he as he moves along he does actually turn you know to face you know his, his controllers face along the path as he moves but you might want to push that more you might want to kind of um, you know have him sort of anticipate the corner more so and then in this case I've already done a little bit on this head control what you, could, you can do is you can actually animate this control it's almost like using animation layers because this is driven by the animation, but it can also be keyed on top of that. Uh, maybe I'll have him bank it out a little bit more, leaning around. Like so he's really leaning around that corner, and maybe even dip him a little bit. You know, you can really add a lot of variation to kind of break up the fact that it's just a cycle originally. And then I can kind of zero it out, and that's back to its to default animation. I actually don't like that pose, so I'm going to fix it a bit. So as I say, you've really got a lot of flexibility with that. And then the other cool thing you can do with this is you can fix foot slip. If you've got my lock to world tools or if you've got another tool that does a similar job, you can do this using the yellow locators at the feet. So again, these are driven by the animation, but you'll see as he I've already done the um his right foot actually, you can see his right foot isn't slipping at all. But his left foot is still slipping quite a bit. Um when you're running along a straight path you can you can get the you can get it pretty much so there's no slip. Uh, if if you're working from a clean animation cycle in the first place, which didn't have any slip, but once you start turning sharply, you're going to get some slip because just by the nature of it, the, the inside foot is not traveling as far as the outside foot, um, so, so there's you know there's going to be a little bit of sliding, but it's very easy to fix with this tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use these locators and the lock to world tool to fix it. And um, the great thing about it is you can also tweak the pose as you're doing it because generally you don't want it just to be fixed the slip. You also want it to sort of match what he's doing. So I'm going to maybe back, maybe angle the foot a little bit more like that. And I'm going to key it like that and I'm going to lock it to world. And I'm going to figure out where does it land. It's probably not landed there. It's probably going to land right in that frame. So I want it locked for that frame, that frame, that frame, that frame. And then here I can tell by the toe pose there that's where he would have lifted off so I'm going to go back here and just unlock all from world and then you can see he slipped off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero out the coordinates on that control which may, basically means I'm back to the default animation I might even give that maybe one more frame just so it's kind of blending from the adjusted position I've done to the actual original animation just makes it feel a little bit more natural and the same thing here then I'm going to go back here maybe and zero it out so again, you've got a couple of frames to blend into exactly where I want them to, to be and then a couple of frames out of it. So it just makes it more smooth. You know, you could do this kind of fix after you've baked the animation to the rig, but you're dealing with a lot more keyframes and you're dealing with more complicated coordinates where this is really nice and simple because you just got, you're just zeroing it out to get back to the uh, to the default animation. So I'll do one more example um, in real time and then I'll speed up the video and finish off the rest of it. So again, I'm going to pick you know, that's probably a pose I want, probably this one actually, maybe angle them a little bit, 
Again, just to kind of suit the fact that he's turning. I like it there, and I'll lock it to world. And I'll key it, key it, key it, and not that one. And then again, key, 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 and not that one. I go back here and unlock off from world. I often go to the middle point because if, if the unlock uh, tool tries its best to avoid gimbal, but sometimes you can get it, so it's better to have it on that frame than, than the uh, last frame. And then I'm going to just zero it out again. You can do that in the channel box. I just have a little script I used to do it there. It's a little bit faster. And again, so now we've, we've got a blend. And um, I'm not crazy about how quickly that's jumping out there. So I'm going to spread this out a little bit more. And give it a few more frames. And I'm actually going to nudge it back. This is kind of like a tweener tool I use. Um, just give it a little bit of a smoother transition into the default pose again. Just to make a little bit more sense. Yeah, so that's the first two steps done. This next one doesn't look too bad, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go through and fix them all. I'm gonna do it quickly, uh, so I'll speed up the video from here. So there he is running along the path, and uh, I say that you know it took a little while, but I've got 120 frames now of him running, changing direction, and uh, I say it's very very quick to edit. You know if I show the locators again, I say I want to have his his head, you know looking anticipating that corner a bit more, or adding a bit of variation. I can do the same thing with his chest. You know bank his whole chest like that. His arms are in chest space, that's why they're moving with it. And I can do the same kind of thing with his tail, even if I want his tail to... It's already following the path, because I, I, I put it on the path when I created the setup. But if I wanted to maybe drag it maybe a little bit more there, you know, I could have it lag a little bit more like that. And then have maybe have it overshoot a little bit, and then just zero it out. Yeah, I've only got one one of the tail controls on the uh, on that curve, but I can put them all on it. Yeah, this tool will work with FK controls as well, even when you've got lock translates. Uh, it it can accommodate for that. So it's gonna hide the locators once more, hide the curves as well. And now you've got a pretty decent looking animation, and it's, I'd say it's it's just based really on one you know 17 frame cycle that I've been able to kind of go in and quickly fix the foot slip, and I can bake this down now to the world. I can um, just demonstrate that. I'm just going to bake the path animation to rig. I want to bake it for 120 frames, so I'm just going to do that. And it's just going to play through. And it's going to bake them out. And it's done. And I can, now I can, uh, if I show the curves again, I can delete the path system. It'll ask me to confirm that. And I go, yep. Yeah. And there he is. If we look at his rig, uh, actually make his rig playable. Here he is running along. And uh, I say that's pretty quick to set up. So I hope that gives an idea of the workflow. Cheers.